You know, and just mention the business and things like that. And, and I'm not asking predictions. I, you already stated your predictions out there many times. But just, you know, the business of like, you know, like, a lot of people feel like you, Devin, you know, there's a lot of credentials. And even Javante, in the sense of winning champions, moving divisions, being undisputed, unified. But the fact that Ryan and Tank, it makes sense business-wise. Um, you know, where, where is your stance on that? Like, the fact that, like, it does it, does it bother you? Because obviously you want to face these guys, but maybe like Ryan, he can deservingly, you know, he's a great fighter, but hasn't got the accomplishments that you have, or, you know, and, and just get a fight that you probably At the end of the day, once again, it's a business, so. Mm -hmm. um, I look at that fight as, um, it's the biggest fight. In boxing in general? The, yes, it's the biggest fight mm -hmm. in boxing. I wouldn't say it's the best fight. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's like the best fight in the best. Mm -hmm. I think Tank is one of the best for sure. I don't think Ryan is on that level where I can call him the best. Mm -hmm. But I still look at it like um, it's the biggest fight in boxing that's made right now. So. Um, Honestly, uh, um, hopefully that, that, that the fight be as good as uh, the hype. And asking you because the fact that you understand business, but you're a, a well-deserved champion that doesn't need to play games. Does that rehydration stuff you hear or things like that? I know that essentially you're not like size-wise bigger, Ryan, but you know, these, these games do come and you know, Floyd, you know, how to do certain things. And I'm sure that you had to take certain sacrifices to get yourself in certain positions. Would, would you play those, like the rehydrators? Does that bother you when you hear stuff like that? Or is it just acceptable? Like that's just boxing and you gotta do I what mean, you gotta do. I mean, I don't wanna hear that shit when it's like, he signed up for it. Mm -hmm. Once you sign up and you, when you sit down there and, and sign them contracts and they say, well, you got the rehydration clause and you say yes, you can't get on a, a, a press conference and go everywhere and keep complaining about it. Like, that's, that's weak to me because at the end of the day, you signed that. Mm -hmm. That's what you wanted. So, that's the only thing that I don't respect about that. Like, I, I don't want to hear that shit because at the end of the day, once you sign that contract that you want to, you're doing what it, what it takes to make the fight happen. Right. There ain't no complaining. When I signed the contract, knowing that Valdez was getting more money than me, I didn't mm -hmm. complain about the shit. You ain't hit me up there, oh, well, I took the, no, it, it, it happened, cool, on to the next. Now, I put myself in a better situation for bigger money, so I, I just don't agree with, like, complaining about that shit when you signed it. Um, if you didn't want to sign it, you should have sat there and negotiated for something else. You should have negotiated mm -hmm. for a higher weight, maybe, mm -hmm. um, or no rehydration clause. I have a... Um, it should have been for you to um, be okay with the, with your decision, but now it looks bad because now it's like you want to keep complaining. It looked like an excuse before the fight. Like you giving up excuse. So how confident are you going into the fight with that on your back? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and just just rounding about the interview and I appreciate the time. You know, I know for you. Sure. Can, I'm I, Gucci. I'm Gucci. Um, I told you, I'm straight. <laughs> you know, the the, the one thing that. Um, that I don't think people understand is that you you, you chase this greatness. Um, you don't care about if you lose. You just want to prove yourself you're the best. And you've had very empathetic words for fighters. That's not true. I care about losing. Well, I'm going I, well, to all right. Fucker. All right, my bad. Regardless, you, you, you to don't win, mind. Win by any correct. means necessary. Correct. That's all I know. That's all I think. I guess correction on my part that you're not afraid to put yourself in a position that it's not about being undefeated. It's about being the best, and you want to fight the best. But when those fighters do take that loss by taking those stuff, but I've heard you say great things about Tio when For he sure. took those losses. Yeah, yeah, sure. What what about it that resonates with you that you can like be so compassionate towards fighters that actually like you just kind of correct them like you care about losing like you were like I don't like that sentence. But what is it that you as a person that could just be so compassionate? There's a lot of fighters that go out there like how you lost. Even your rivals, people might have talked stuff about you. You never really go out there and kind of pour the salt on them. I know you want to. I see tweets every once in a while. We do the reaction videos, but you never like up, open up the wound, put the alcohol, the salt. You never really go. You're actually more compassionate on that. Just that part of that growth. Nah, for sure. I mean that that's with me regardless. Cause at the end of the day, scared money don't make no money. Mm -hmm. So you gotta take risks. And when fighters like uh, 
Tia Fimo and Lemachenko, I'm just giving you an example, fight each other. Um, they are both fighters that's high commodity fighters. And um, the person who lose, you know, uh, I got nothing but respect for them because they signed up to fight each other at the end of the day. They put themselves at risk. They bet on themselves. So um, just because you fell, I don't look at it like, that's bad. Plus, I think boxing is, I told you, that's why like, I went away from loving the sport because of the fact that boxing is not how it used to be. Like the Sugar Ray Leonard's or Roberto Duran's, they could have losses and fight each other a thousand times and they was Gucci. Like they was, they was legends, they legendary. But like nowadays it's like, I guess cause it's the Floyd Mayweather era when he went undefeated. Damn, fighters gotta be undefeated now, so now people are scared to take fights. It's, gonna, it's a lot more ducking, and it's just like a whole different lame-ass generation, and that's but, how I look at it. But just extending from that, Andre Ward went undefeated, and obviously, what if you go undefeated? Would that kind of be like the gift and the curse, like essentially because the fact that? Nah, that's, the, that's always the goal. That's what I'm mm -hmm. going in there to do, for sure, but at the end of the day, like the kids might I be don't, I don't take nothing away from the fighters that go in there and put everything on the line and they, they lost. Mm -hmm. um, I got nothing but respect for them fighters because at the end of the day, they dropped their nuts and went in that motherfucker and put it on the line. So um, I can't take nothing away from them dudes. Um, I, I respect it. And my final question in, in regards of before you coming up with your great fight back at you New know, Jersey on April 8th against one of the top guys in the lightweights without a name and put some respect because you are going after a legitimate good person even if the fight fans don't know they need to do their research if by all means everything goes well does the ryan and tank direction look more interesting or is it the undisputed of uh, the haney and lomachenko the direction you want to go see that's what i'm torn in between right now so mm -hmm. like it's hard to give you a real answer on that's that respectful. because at the end of the day um, i just told you about the business like i know the business mm -hmm. side of me um would think tank and ryan would be the more so move to be to go at the but then the the champion and the the, the, the person who went and won all them belts at 130 and the person that was champion at 126 um that person is like man i need to be mm -hmm. undisputed by fighting to win the devin and lemachenko so um, it's hard to really give you like a, a real answer. I got to sit back and think. Yeah, no worries. That. You don't even got to give an answer. At the end of the day, you want all of it. It's just which one makes sense for you. We'll yeah, find out. Yeah, yeah. I have it go. Um, I told you I'm with. I'm with whatever. I know how great of a fighter that I am. So um, I don't have no insecurities when it comes to fighting anybody. But I'm just saying. I, I got to think on that just because I know, like, it's two sides of me. Mm -hmm. When it comes to that, I got a business side. Yep. It's like, man, let's go that direction. Then I got the legacy side that's yep. like, okay, I want to go down as a great, and this would mm -hmm. be better for being a great. Yep. Um, so it's two sides of me to that question, so I can't really answer that. There's the money Shakur and the demon Shakur. We just, sure. we, <laughs> sure. but we're getting both. So I appreciate the time. Wish you the best, and thanks so much. Over here on Fight Hype.